This is The Antidote, the culture and politics podcast for millennials and Gen Z, where we search for the cure to today's viral social issues. And today's episode is quite different than any of the episodes that we've had in the past because it is my first solo episode and it's going to be a bit shorter than usual. To be quite honest, I wasn't even sure if this episode would make it up this week, given um, everything that's been happening. But I felt like this moment deserved it and that it would be necessary for me to make sure um, that I update you guys, especially because of all of the messages that I've been overwhelmed with over the past week. As you probably might have already heard, I was arrested one week ago for the first time in my life after a first class passenger on my American Airlines flight complained that I made him feel uncomfortable. Now, I am not going to get too deep into the details of the story and what happened because the fact is that we do now have active investigations into what I had to endure and the actions that were taken that day. I posted a story time on TikTok yesterday that has somehow accumulated over 5 million views overnight. And I told everyone that I would be doing a part two because there was even more to the story. So that's what this is. But I feel like it's necessary to start off with a sincere thank you from the bottom of my heart. This story um, became a, a trending news story globally. Uh, it's been covered in international press. Uh, all, all types of languages, all types of media to a caliber that I was not expecting and that is entirely because of the community behind me and the supporters that I'm very very blessed to have because of the work that we do. There has been literally no shortage of community support and I'm literally cringing saying the word literally because I said it so many times under duress in my Facebook live <laughs> that has now been shared all over the internet. Um, but basically last week, um, for those that may have missed it, as I was being removed from the flight, I went on Facebook live because I was so scared of what was going to happen, so uncertain, so unsure. I was alone and by myself and it was the only form of accountability that I had in that moment. Um, and you guys saw me through. I, I have to tell you, like I was not even aware of what was happening on social media while I was in custody. I was arrested for, I know that it said online, it's been saying like that I've been arrested for four hours, but actually it was close to six, six hours um, of me being under arrest, the majority of which was spent handcuffed to a metal bench, but I'll get into that in a minute. But I did want to share some details about what happened after I got arrested because that to me was just as traumatizing and deserves just as much uh, attention and awareness for what Muslim women and other vulnerable minorities and women of color especially uh, have to go through in the hands of a system that wasn't created to protect them. When I was arrested, and you may have seen this in some of the clips that have been circulating online, the officer snatched the phone out of my hand while it was still unlocked and while it was still live streaming. I was so scared because I thought that once he took my phone, that live stream, all that footage was going to all disappear. And I was scared because I also had only gotten arrested in like the final moments of that stream. Um, so it was really terrifying to not even know if anybody would have any idea of where I was or what happened to me. None of the other passengers were aware that I got arrested because American Airlines and the police officers did a really good job of concealing it from the other passengers by deboarding the flight and then arresting me on the platform and not even bringing me back into the gate. And obviously, I was afraid that the evidence would be lost. So I had no idea 
what was happening when I was in, in there. On the outside, not only did the live post to my Facebook, but it was stirring up a frenzy on my social media amongst my supporters, my community, my immediate networks. Um, and I didn't realize it, but they all got straight into action. In my live stream, I was calling on anyone that was listening to please contact uh, the civil rights group, the Council of American Islamic Relations, which they did. And sure enough, an attorney at CARE had already gotten started to figure out the details of where I was, what flight I was on, what airport I was at, and stuff like that. So basically, the second part of that entire ordeal was that when I was arrested, they tried to have me remove my headscarf. The officers that were handling me, I guess, um, they repeatedly asked me to remove my hijab, my headscarf, in order to just like be <laughs> under arrest, I guess. Um, and obviously I refused. I said that I wear this for religious reasons and that I couldn't take it off. And they still said that my scarf was a threat that I could use it to hurt myself. And for that reason, they were going to handcuff me to a metal bench for the duration of my arrest, rather than place unhandcuff me and place me in a holding cell like they would with any other person. On top of this disproportionate level of violence that I had just experienced as a woman of color, a Muslim woman on a flight, getting freaking arrested for no reason, and then on top of that, in the custody of the officers, being violated of my rights, that added a whole extra layer to the trauma of being arrested in the first place. <sighs> it's even hard for me to talk about right now because I know that what I endured, as horrible as it was, I'm still so freaking privileged compared to the outcomes of situations like this when they happen to people of color in this country, when they happen to black people in this country. So I ended up spending the majority of those six hours under arrest with my wrist handcuffed to a metal bench. Um... It, I can't begin to describe the levels of trauma that that inflicts on especially people of color in this country. And to find myself in that situation for literally no reason, um, it was hard. Also, just the insecurity of feeling like I had to be my own advocate, like I only had myself in that situation, and the people whose custody I was in were not concerned with my rights or my well-being. I was denied food when I told them that I was hungry because they said that since I was handcuffed to the metal bench, they can't give me food. It was definitely a very intimidating position to be in and the entire time I was just thinking about all of the other minorities, people of color who aren't as well versed in their rights. It was scary and intimidating even with that knowledge, you know? So <sighs> everything happens for a reason and I do feel like this situation happened to me in order to draw the freaking line and set a precedent to stop this from happening to other people, especially those that are more vulnerable. Um, but it wasn't until the lieutenant walked back in, like hours into my arrest, that he asked me, were you recording this? And I go, yeah. And then he says, well, it's all over the internet. And that was when I realized, like, oh my god, my 
my live published like it's there people can see what happened people know that i'm here people know that i'm arrested and i just shrugged at him like yeah sorry not sorry you know i could tell that it irritated them but i was so freaking relieved and uh i just at that point i just like patiently waited for when i can have my phone call I do think absolutely that the social media attention and focus on this was a really needed, badly needed layer of protection for me in that moment. Really, it was, it was a shield for me. I feel that it's necessary to really highlight and emphasize this part, which has been very secondary, uh, almost ignored in a lot of the conversations and discussions that have, been that have been happening around this because here's the thing, especially when we're talking about like Karens and Kens, right? You are literally weaponizing the police against people of color. And when you do that, you place us in horror, in some situations for some people, for black Americans, you could literally be signing their death certificate by doing that in my case what that resulted in was a very traumatic experience due to my religious background and being placed under arrest for six hours while in this state it's interesting because that first class passenger i remember he got very ticked off that I called him entitled and yet he went on to weaponize his entitlement against a more vulnerable person it is it is I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you it is really annoying to me that my life had to be just tremendously disrupted in this way that i had to endure all of this mental and emotional stress to deal with this arrest have my travel my business be disrupted because of one man wanting to assert his like dominance that day it does irritate me that in the midst of all of this attention he basically was able to get away with it without any consequences yeah that really irritates me but whenever I started to feel that over the course of this past week, I chose to tell myself that this is not about him. This is not about the individual. This isn't even about me. This is not about canceling the individual Amy Coopers of the world. This is fixing the system that is producing the Amy Coopers of the world. So I'm choosing to look at this as a moment that demands us to hit pause because certainly i am far from the first person the first muslim woman that this has happened to at an airport but i really want to be the last i do and i want to use this moment i mean everyone has been saying and the responses online is wow you really picked the wrong woman to do that to and i am going to honor that and see that through because yeah they did pick the wrong one that day they picked the wrong one every time that they've done this no matter what but this time i do think that things happen for a reason and i absolutely will use my resources to make sure that this gets the attention that it deserves that this gets addressed in the way that it should be that it deserves to be and that it sets a precedent for change. So for the updates, that is the update as of yet. There are ongoing investigations happening right now uh, into what happened to me. I think American Airlines is really hoping, really, really hoping that they can just wait this one out and then eventually sweep it under the rug like they usually do. But something tells me aka you guys, that we are not going to allow that to happen this time. As for me, everyone that's been asking for updates about how I'm doing and everything, I have to tell you that you, my supporters, and the community that I have behind me has been so, so amazing in taking care of me and checking in on me, and I don't think that I would have survived the past week without that support. 
so I really really want to thank every single person that took the time to watch to share to amplify to comment to tweet to send me a message i have been nowhere near able to respond to every single person but please know that i see all of your messages i am hearing and carrying the stories that you're sharing with me of similar experiences that you've had and it means the world to me that you care. It really does. From the second since I got out, you guys have not, no one has allowed me to have a single moment feeling alone. And just folks, friends that I haven't heard from in forever, people that have followed me for years that just came out, showed up and made sure to reach out to me to let me know that they're there. Um, like that's that really that's really gotten me through and i'm just so grateful and i am going to do everything in my power to make sure this negative experience that i had to go through turns into an overall positive outcome for us for people that are even less privileged than me to feel safe and not have to go through what I had to go through and what others have had to go through. I will absolutely be keeping you all updated every step of the way and we're not going to let the pressure up. We can't, we can't afford to because if it can happen to me, it can happen to literally anybody. There I go saying literally again. Um, <laughs> I think this past week has shown everybody that together we are a force. See you all back next week for our regularly scheduled programming. I'm Amani, and this is The Antidote.